everyone, if you're new, I'm Mina and welcome to my channel. I'm so happy to see you guys here. I'm really sorry that I haven't uploaded a video in I think like five months now. I've been super busy myself preparing and interviewing for internships, but today I'm super excited to be bringing you guys all of my tips and tricks on how I was able to land a software engineering internship for next summer. Before we get started here, I do want to mention that this is going to be the first video in a series that I'm going to be talking about my internship application experience. So basically in this video, I'm going to be doing a sort of overview and just like general pieces of advice that I would give to anyone applying for internships. And in the next couple of videos, I'm going to be talking about my specific offers. So I'm going to be talking about Amazon, Capital One, as well as Roblox. And then in the last video of the series, I'm going to be talking about which internship program I actually chose to partake in and all the pros and cons of each of the three different internships. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So to begin this video, I just wanted to give a quick overview of all of my stats that I was applying with, just because every applicant is different. So me giving you my stats might help you a little bit with seeing how you gauge against me. So I have my resume pulled up on my computer here and I'm going to be talking about all of my previous internship experience. So last summer from May 2022 to August 2022, I was a software development intern with Procter & Gamble's Oral-B, which is the toothbrush company. Before that, from June 2020 to May 2022, I was a data analytics intern for Procter & Gamble's Olay, which is the skincare brand. Before that, I was a website development intern for LA as well, and this was only a one month winter internship in January 2020. Before that, I was also a software development intern at the University of Cincinnati's IT Solution Center. So this was from June 2019 to May 2020. And I actually also included in my application that I worked as a student researcher for about two years. Continuing on here, I want to talk about all of like the technical qualifications and skills that I included within my resume. So for programming languages, I put Java, Python, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, Mathematica, Swift, and Swift UI. For operation systems, I put iOS, Mac OS X, Windows, Android, Linux, Chrome OS. For hardware, I put Raspberry Pi, LED registers, breadboard, wiring, and BLE, which are Bluetooth low energy devices. And then for applications, I put Xcode, Word, WordPress, Webflow, Ionic 3, Angular, Google Analytics, as well as Data Studios. Just to give you some other statistics, I am a student at Rice University, which is a top 20 school located in Houston, Texas. I'm getting a BSCS degree, and this is actually my second year at Rice, so this should be my sophomore year, and you'll know this if you've been subscribed to me for a while. However, I am trying to graduate in a total of three years, just because from high school I had a lot of AP and dual credit college courses that I could transfer. So technically, I am a junior standing right now, and that's what I applied to all of these internships as. So I put that I'm graduating in May 2024, and I am an Asian woman, so that does kind of have some play in the application process as well. So my first tip is that you definitely need to stay organized throughout this entire internship process. It is a lot of work, especially if you're trying to apply to more than like 25 places, which I think is very common. So my suggestion would be to create a Trello board. If you don't know what Trello is, it's this really great project management tool. I'm a huge fan and supporter of it, so I can show you guys my Trello board right here. So basically, I just have a bunch of different lists here. So I just put my resume and cover letter as well as there's this really great GitHub link that basically had a list of a bunch of summer internships for software as well as like data science, etc. So that was a useful link that I wanted to have on hand there. Then I also have a list of a bunch of recruiters that I actually reached out to on LinkedIn. I had read somewhere that it's good to reach out and be like more personal with the recruiters but to be honest i don't know how much that actually helped me so you can do it if you want but i don't know how much it would actually help you out then i have a to apply list where basically i just created this massive like i think it was about I don't know, 70 companies of all the places I wanted to apply to. And I actually created this list like early June, just so that I had a general idea of every single company I wanted to work at. So you can see that there are so many companies there. 
Then I also have an applied list where basically those are all of the places that I wanted to apply to and I actually put in an application. So you can see that there are a lot of places in the to apply section that I didn't end up applying to. And that's because I was able to land an internship pretty early on and I figured that I didn't necessarily want to work at any of these places more than the places that I got an offer for, which is why I decided to not actually go through the entire pro application process with all of these two apply companies. So of the about 25 places that I actually sent in an application for, I did the online assessment for about 10 of them and the others I like to this day still haven't heard back from or they just went ahead and rejected me after the resume screening. And from there, I got the offer to do a final interview for four out of the 10 companies that I did the OA for. And then I got an offer from three of those companies that I did the final interview for. So as you can see, I think it's really useful to have this kind of Trello board layout or something similar. So you can keep track of all the places you apply to, as well as you know what companies you wanna follow up with the recruiters if you haven't heard from them in like a month or something like that. And you just want an update on where your application is in the process. I think having this all laid out if you are applying to more than like 25 companies is super, super useful. Okay, so let's talk about Lead Code. I'm sure that if you have started in the application process already, you're already familiar with what Lead Code is. Basically, it's very similar to HackerRank where they just have like a massive database of problems that you can do, ranging in levels of difficulty. And you basically just gotta keep grinding on all of those problems. And very similar problems come up in the online assessments as well as technical interviews. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about my Lead Code experience and advice. First of all, I started studying Lead Code very, very early. I started in like early June, and I think most people don't start studying this until like August, around when they get back to school. I'd highly advise you just start as soon as possible so you can get as much experience as possible. I think it is a mistake to wait until like August when you are starting to apply to places because you are already so busy with school and everything else happening in your life that you can't do as many problems as you probably should. So I definitely say start very early, start like late May or June. And I initially started up with about three to five questions per day. Honestly, I was pretty bad at it in the first couple of weeks that I was doing it. So definitely don't be discouraged, but it does get a lot easier the more that you do, which is again, why you should start early so you can do as many as possible. Because by the end of summer, after studying them for about two and a half to three months, I was able to do like on average 20 per day for about a week. One day I remember I did like 40 of them just because I really wanted to grind out as many as possible. So you can see that there was a huge difference between only barely managing to do like three to five a day to doing like 20 to 40. So you can see that practice definitely helps there. And in total, from the start of June to right before I did my last final interview technical assessment, I did 340 problems. And I'd also advise you, you don't have to do like the hard level difficulty. All I did was like probably 330 to 335 easy and then like 5 to 10 medium and that really really helped me to prepare for all these interviews and the online assessments. Something that I did forget to mention that I quickly wanted to mention is if you're not convinced that just doing the easy level difficulty of Lead Code is enough to prepare you for the OAs and technical assessments, I was able to pass every single test case on all of the problems for every OA that I did. With the exception of Capital One, I was super close to finishing the last problem but wasn't able to finish it. I just wanted to throw that in there in case you were wondering if just the easy Lead Code problems were enough. Another tip that I have for you guys is you need to start applying ASAP. So like I mentioned earlier, there was this really great GitHub link that just had all of the internships when they basically came out for their applications. I was following that very closely. I check it like two times a day during the summer just because you wanna apply as soon as possible to these companies so you can be at the top of the queue and get through the process as fast as possible. And the reason you wanna apply as early as possible, and I'd say starting from like end of June to July, is because you can basically get an offer before even going back to school in like mid-August, which is what I did. And honestly, it was such 
such a huge relief to have that already handled as opposed to having to juggle school on top of internships like a lot of my friends are doing right now. So I definitely recommend just apply as early as possible, get through the pipeline as quick as possible, and you're definitely going to thank yourself later for that. And my last and final tip is to come up with specific behavioral stories. So what I did was I kind of went through my end of high school years up until where I'm at now. And I tried to come up with five to seven behavioral stories that were kind of versatile. So no matter what question I was asked, I could always pick from one of those. I think I ended up doing seven. I could always pick from one of those seven stories just because you don't want to feel unprepared in your behavioral interviews. I guess that's kind of obvious, but you want to make sure that you have a wide range of stories that you can choose from. So you're not like stuttering and trying to come up with something on the spot during the behavioral. And just in general, this might also be obvious, but make sure you read up on the company values because these these behavioral interviews are super important in trying to figure out if you're going to be a good fit for that company. And so they want to see if a lot of your morals and your values align with the company as well. So if you do your research on the company, you figure out their values, you can kind of think about what questions they would ask relating to the company values and then use your stories to figure out what story you could probably pick for which company value question that they would ask you. For those of you who made it this far into the video, I wanted to reward you with a bonus tip that literally just came to mind as I was editing this video. So this bonus tip is that when you're doing your technical assessment with your interviewer, really try not to get frustrated and show that you're still enjoying yourself and having a good time. And I think that's so important because along with evaluating your actual coding and technical skills, they're also evaluating whether or not you'd be a good fit with the team and if you're going to be easy to work with. And no one wants to work with someone who gets really frustrated and just shuts down whenever they encounter a challenge. So even though you are going through challenges during the technical assessment or a case interview, if you end up doing one of those, make sure that you still have a very positive attitude and just communicating really well with your interviewer. So that's it for this specific video, but make sure you guys turn on notifications and subscribe so you don't miss my next four videos in this series because I'm going to be talking about more specific tips relating to Roblox, Capital One, as well as Amazon, as well as what the offer actually included and finally, once again, why I chose to go with which company I did. So I hope that these tips were helpful for you guys. Stay tuned and see you in my next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye!